Yeah. I looked it up before we hopped on because I had seen some numbers. How much does he get fined? And it's basically ninety thousand dollars. And it's not thirty thirty thirty. It's like a fifteen thirty forty five. So every day you miss, the fine goes up. And this this goes for any player around the league. I, I saw a headline today. Aaron Rodgers, <laughs> NFL sneaky, incredible job. If you're a good player, you only have to show up from August first till your season ends, and five other days, not seven days, not a week. Really, you get to town Sunday afternoon. You do this rich. You 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 private jet in. Monday, you're not even on the field. You're you probably just BSing, eating some lunch, watching a little film. Then you practice for three days, and then you're done. You have five, like Trent Williams, Aaron Rodgers. Beside the six months, they work five days a year the, the other six months. That's a pretty good gig. And I think a lot of players of their ilk kind of do that, right? And it, look, I got no problem with it after witnessing what OTAs have become. But let's face it, the difference is Debo, like you see Trent was at the game too. Like Trent's here. Trent's going to be at practice. Uh, you know, I think there's still people question whether Nick's going to show up or not. I would expect Nick, you're not going to get fined. He will be there. Now, how much he does, who knows? But I, I do think the number one question, like, is Debo willing? Because as you told me, and I, I do think, I've seen this too, the new CBA, they changed some rules because they didn't want to have to do, like, a holdout means nothing. And I understand where the teams are coming from. Just make it black and white. Like, we don't want to get to a point where we can't rescind fines. Like, if the you're going to make don't want to be in the position to have to rescind fines. Yeah, just make it black and white. Like, if it's voluntary, it's voluntary. And I think the biggest difference of OTAs when I got involved in the league, and definitely well before that, players always felt like, you say it's voluntary, but that's bullshit. If I don't show up, you're pissed off. And it was true. And I think we've all been in jobs where like, yeah, you don't have to come in today, but it's like, yeah, I probably got to go in today. Where you just like, if you're not the boss, just tell me, do you need me in or do you not? And I think any bo good boss can just be black. Like you have to come in today or you don't have to come in today. And I think that's where the NFL has gotten now. And it's like, they can't rescind these fines. So if you're going to skip, and it'll be interesting who around the league doesn't show up. I think most guys show up because it's like, why would you want to just pay 90 grand when it's three days of work guy? Three. Well, kind of three. I mean, the practice is slated to be about an hour long. I would imagine most practices are that way. Practices at 10.50 a.m. Kyle Shanahan talks to media at noon on Tuesday. So not going to be a very, it's not, it's not a full day of, you know, don't, it's not double days by any stretch. If, if I was, if I was Debo's representation and knowing that they can't rescind the fine, I would say show up and do nothing. I think that's, I think that's the new thing, right? Cause I, yeah. I don't blame Debo or Lamar. I cannot take a full speed rep under this contract. Especially after C.J. Beathard got uh, carted off the field on, on Monday at Jags practice. So I think it's significant if Debo's there because I do think if you're Debo and you are still hard line, I am, I am not playing for these guys, which you and I both agree is an illogical stance at this point given that there's really no motivation for the 49ers to move them and they would only look bad if they did it. So it's a double whammy. Um, but if you were him and you really wanted to take a hard line, you don't show up. And you just basically say, whatever we negotiate, whether I negotiate it with the 49ers and they pay me, or I negotiate it with another team because they've traded me. Again, I don't think that's going to happen. Bad logic, but I'm just saying from his perspective, you say, we'll work the $90,000 into the deal. Like, I'm not showing up. And then when I do my deal with the Niners, they're going to pay me an extra $90,000 as a way to make good. And this is just money. Or you could look at it like, I'm being fine 90, and this is money I'm spending to try and get an extra $4 million a year out of them later. And this is just an investment in my negotiation tactic. Cause I think if Debo showed up for a hold in, just, you know, standing there on the sideline, wearing a hoodie or whatever, um, that would feel pretty significant for a guy that told Jeff Darlington, I'm not going to play for this team again. If you show up, first of all, what is he wearing? If he shows up and is standing on the field, is he wearing a Niners shirt? Like to walk into that building again, says to me, I, my, I have thought a little bit on the idea that I'm never playing for you again. But I think we all agree that that's been thrown out the window. That's where I've well, seen it. Well, we've, it's been thrown out the window from a Niners perspective. Like, I don't think there's any, I don't see how he's getting traded. I don't think it's happening, but it still requires him to acknowledge it and recognize it. And I think if he shows up, it's him recognizing a little bit like, this is the team I'm on. He keeps going to Warriors games. Keeps going to Warriors games. Didn't really smile when they put him on the screen. Kind of like Michael B. Jordan. Did not want to be seen. Did Michael B. Jordan is getting a breakup or someone? Big breakup. 
I did a deep dive on this on uh, Monday morning. I thought this might come up today. Lori Harvey, who is Steve Harvey's daughter, who, who apparently has had, you know, someone did a great gift like Lori Harvey dating. And it was a little kid with like eight apples. Each apple had a bite taken out of it and just thrown to the side. She dumped him. They claim it was mutual, but um, I don't know if Lori Harvey dated P. Diddy and one of his and his son. Lori Harvey, there was a soccer player that she was engaged to. Isn't briefly. Lori Harvey like 28? Not very. I, I was going to say even younger. Oh, 22, 25? Yeah, that, that was my guess. I didn't. P. Diddy's I, like 48. Th- just they were photographed together. Um, I think there's a long line of like uh, gotcha. broken hearts uh, uh, left behind by Lori Harvey. He's a heartbreaker. Because everyone was like, you can see it in Michael B. Jordan's eyes. <laughs> Yeah, it, I, I saw I saw a meme that was like, when you're heartbroken and you just want to cry in your bed, but the boys take you out for a night out and you don't want to, any part of it. And he's just like so angry being there. I highly recommend a Lori Harvey Twitter search just for all the responses to that tweet. 25 years old. So anyway. Um, Makes sense. I guess you, Debo, it's a tough position because part of the reason you wouldn't want to show up is because you may, maybe, maybe. And a lot of this with Debo, unfortunately, is we're, we're left to guess, is that it is a it's an awkward situation, right? It's not that there was some anonymous report that Debo doesn't want to play there. Jeff Tarlington said, "I talked to Debo. Yeah, and he wants to be yeah, traded." That's so long ago. They've talked since. The players have talked since. Like I, I think that report now is kind of irrelevant, given where we're at. Like that individual tweet and report. Um, I don't. I don't find I don't, it. I don't find the relevancy there now. The awkward situation when they've all communicated since. Yeah, I again, it's he has to he has to say what I said is no longer what I'm going to do if he shows up and signs a contract with them, which is fine. Like it's whatever life is filled with awkward situations. It's not that big of a deal, but I think it's significant if he shows up because it's a complete change in his public public presentation of the situation. I, I guess I don't look at his public situ- his stance anymore as like trade me or else. Like it feels like that's that's over. Like he's he lost. That's what it feels like. But again, he has done nothing publicly. Not a thing. Right? Yeah. Besides go to Warriors games. And that Vegas signing thing wearing wasn't he wearing like what was he wearing? Was he wearing something red maybe when he signed autographs at the draft? You don't remember, but yeah, I mean I, I just look at it like I think it Everyone knows the stance now. I think the only question, I mean, knows like you're stuck here. The only question is like, will they pay them? Like that's where they're at. Like Debo's no, you're not getting traded. Like that, that ship sailed, buddy. (laughs) Like you lost. Has he accepted that is my question. Did did you lose or did you really care that much? Or was it really just kind of throwing it out there, seeing the response? Because it wasn't, you know, I, 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 I think it's a little overrated how like hard of a stance he took. I know it was crazy because you don't usually see it happen that way, but it wasn't like, Trade me or else. But he said, yeah. he said, trade me. Yeah, that was three, four months ago. I understand, but that was what happened. Like, Two that's where ago. this started. Like, it didn't start from some rant. It started when he said, trade me. That's yeah. where it started. And they now, said, no, you can't. Now, you can't lose when you sign a contract for $60 million. There's no L's in that or whatever his contract's going to be. And that's the reality is I think you're willing to do whatever it takes to sign a $60 million contract or a $70 million. You, you could argue you're saying it's an L for him. You could also. Argue no, no, I'm not saying it's an L at all. I'm saying the second he signs a contract, it's a win. No, you're saying it's an L for him and his stance. If he just, if he capitulates and sh- does a hold in and shows up, I, you could also argue like, look at Kyler, you know, there's this, maybe you just take some time, take a deep breath, think, be tactful about your decision and approach it a little bit differently to try to get paid. I think that's a good way to look at it. My first tactic of strong arming these guys didn't work. But again, the one thing we don't know with him is wouldn't John and Kyle it? probably recommend that we'd love to have you around the Absolutely. guys. We'd want you here. Yeah. Please come. Absolutely. You don't you can stand on the sideline. Uh I do you think know, you have to wear team apparel. The, the, <laughs> you can't wear just like uh what was when what was the finals game that Mahomes was wearing like a map or the was it the Western Conference Finals? Yeah, against the Warriors, Mahomes were like a Mavs jersey. His wife wore like a Balenciaga jersey or something like she was picking no team other than high fashion. That's my squad. Uh, yeah, I mean, part of it to your point that we don't really know with him is was it all a negotiating tactic or did he really was there a point in time where he said there was a zero percent chance I'm back on the 49ers and he has since had to ch- change that perspective? It's a million dollar question. We don't know, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, right? No. Once he shows up. They get him. Once they do a contract, he gets paid. Nobody, there's nothing to really complain about. Yeah. 
And I think part of this, to your point about the awkwardness or why there shouldn't be any, is the Niners, for their part, Kyle and John, have been effusive in what they've said about him publicly. Like, I don't know if you saw the clip today. Darvin Ham got introduced. Shout out to Darvin Ham, by the way. Ham. Darvin Ham got introduced as the uh, new Lakers coach. I, I saw someone said a uh, future name was uh, Darvin Haberman and Middlecoff. Or it was the it was the first comment. It was Darvin Hammond Middle. <laughs> that was pretty good. good. That's good. Did you see the clip where somebody asked him about Russell Westbrook? He started going on and on and on about how Russell Westbrook's one of the greatest players in the league. And wow. then the camera at the press conference cuts, and Russell is there <laughs> watching the press conference. Which of course Darvin knows, right? Yeah. So same deal. Like what what do you who cares what anybody else thinks other than you're trying to you gotta coach this guy? You're my boy. <laughs> So my fake MySpace back in 2002 was Darvin Ham. Uh, Milwaukee Buck? Was that TV's on? Yeah, it was a buck. So I don't know. I mean, I think it's in, obviously it's in everybody's best interest for him to show up. It would be a pretty big jump, I think, from being a total hard line to then not ever actually missing anything. I, I guess my, my, my point is, I as of recording this, no clue if he'll show up. Mayoko thinks he's not going to be there. I think m- most people assume he's not going to. I don't think it would be that crazy if he's there. I guess my point because I don't think it's I don't think he's on some crazy stance. I think that died. I don't think it'd be crazy if he's there either. But I think it would be. I do think it, it would. would be I, 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 it would be very significant. I just don't think people view him like some hardcore stance. Like it's it's this or else. That's not what it feels like. Well, it can't be point. that, right? Oh well, yeah, he lost now. Though. Yeah, it, it can't be that now.